One of the things that makes this part so crazy is No stop in Jalava is complete without a trip to the airplane. Finally made it. Waited years to come here. So we just passed the plane that everyone sees and takes pictures of. And now we're on the road to the Jalava Air Force Base. So right now, these are runways, maybe not that, but up here, these are the runways of the Jalava Air Force Base near Jalava, Croatia. So if you see out here, there's a massive runway, and it leads right into that tunnel down there, which I'll be showing you later. So, situated, this place is really, really close to the Bosnian border. I believe that's the runway also. It's really close to the Bosnian border, very close near to the town of Bihać in Bosnia. This site was originally known, or officially known, as Object 505, and it is the biggest underground airport in all of the Balkans, which doesn't, makes me wonder how many more <laughs> there are in the Balkans. Its primary purpose was to house long-range early radar warning systems similar to NORAD in the United States. The construction of the base was done with the utmost secrecy, starting in 1957 and ending in 1965. And it is really, really something to behold. The construction of this went over budget by about three times. It ended up being about six billion US dollars, which given the time frame in the Yugoslavia, that was quite, quite over budget. This absolute marvel of engineering has four exits and spans this entire giant mountain. It goes all the way through it. So not only getting all of that material out of the way, not having it collapse on you, but then actually being able to build the other things is truly a feat of engineering. In fact, this place is so well built, it was designed to take a direct hit from a 20 kiloton nuclear weapon. It housed two full squadrons of fighter jets, over a thousand people, had fuel reserves, backup generators, it had water filtration, it had its water ports. I managed to find a few air inlets and that could easily be blocked off and ended up finding some of the HVAC system, ended up finding a lot of it. And this place is, this place is massive. It's so easy to get lost. Probably one of the most dangerous places I've ever explored. The water supply actually came from deep underground, almost like a, like a spring. 
and they had pipes that brought it up into massive storage tanks where it was probably treated, but it might have just been good enough to drink freight from the source. So with everything that this place was built and designed for, designed to protect from, the one thing they couldn't predict was the brutal Yugoslavian civil war. And that ultimately ended up being the downfall of it. During the retreat from this part of Croatia, the Yugoslav National Army, who was in control of this, being chased off by the presumably the Croatians and possibly the Slovenians. Not 100% sure, don't kill me in the comments. So as the Yugoslav National Army was pulling away from this region of Croatia, they set off the built-in explosives in this place. When it was built, they built explosives into the major infrastructure of the building so that in case it was about to fall into enemy hands or something like that, they could totally ruin the entire place and make it unusable for whoever would be coming later and possibly take it. They didn't want their massive militarily advanced creation to be used against them. So they detonated all the inbuilt explosives and then came back and hit it with even more explosives. The second round of explosives, they used 56 tons of explosives to just totally destroy the functionality of this place. Here's another door. That was the other entrance I found. So today, this abandoned marvel lies between the border of Bosnia and Croatia. And it's, it's actually really incredible. I'm really fortunate that I got to see it. Um, it is a very, very dangerous place to explore. Uh, I went in by myself. Uh, you need to wear some sort of respirator or it's advised that you do. Who knows what kind of chemicals or anything like that are still in there. It could also be somewhat easy to get lost if you don't prepare ahead of time. Uh, one thing I did, I had my main flashlight and then I brought a backup flashlight and backup batteries. And at one point my flashlight did go out, but it was no big deal. I had my backup flashlight, backup batteries in my pocket, I took my backup flashlight out, put new batteries in my main light, good to go. So a Croatian cop just told me I couldn't fly my drone. Not because drones aren't allowed here, or not because any other secrets or anything like that, but because it's so close to the border of Bosnia that he said he didn't want a problem. He didn't want me driving it over the border, which, eh, fair enough. So let's take a quick stroll down the runway.
You okay? Okay. <laughs>